Alright. Hey guys, um, welcome to a new video. My name is Josh and I am the founder and CEO of TrainFX, a training group that is basically um, more centralized around helping Trinidadians within the Caribbean um, learning how to trade and get interested and sensitize them to this basic form of revenue that's available to everyone also to those in foreign countries as well um so what this video is going to be about is one of the main topics i find goes uh, a lot of, it goes over a lot of heads within the trading community and that is psychology within the foreign exchange market and specifically how does psychology play in you know taking trades placing them your wins and losers and whatnot within the whole trading um, ecosystem that being said um this video is really to sensitize people about that um, specific information because a lot of times i see i've seen that this is one of the most i guess one of the topics that should be discussed that's not really dis um, discussed upon all right so we're gonna touch on a few things and this is from me personally um how I experienced this week and how trading psychology can affect your trading ability. Um, so let's just dive in. We're going to go into the Telegram group. This is a Telegram group created for TrainFX members or anybody that's interested in joining, um, you know, getting themselves familiarized with the TrainFX community. Um, so as you can see here, at June 6th, which was the starting of this week, I placed a couple of trades. I caught a couple of trades, right? This one being New Zealand CAD. We also had GBPNCD and GBPCHF. And as you can see here, I stated the reasons why I was looking at getting these specific pairs. Um, that being said, it was a mixture of fundamentals and technicals coming to align together. That really was the deciding, um, the deciding factors for me to actually post these trades within the group and tell my followers, subscribers, um, people within the channel um, that these are pairs that I'm looking at specifically to get into at that point of time. Now, usually I do not trade on Sunday market opens, which is when the markets open here at Sundays. Um, it would be maybe Monday evening when there's a little bit more people stepping within to the markets um, right after the market open there's low volume low volatility not much happens um, so there's not a lot of room for trades to actually progress um, that being said these were trades that I have been looking at since the week before and the week prior for a setup to actually potentially get into these particular trades all right, so let's start with the NZD card. All right, so as you can see, this is the reason why I was looking to take this particular pair. The price made a significant low, showing a nice trend forming with the card. Hopefully, we can see this continuation momentum on this currency pair for this week. And one of the reasons why I said that, let's just pull up NZD card. One of the reasons why I said that was because, as you can see here on the economic calendar, for Wednesday, I honestly thought it was Tuesday. Well, from Wednesday, um, tomorrow, what we had was two CAD news events, um, BOC interest rate decision and rate statement. The rate decision is basically when um, us makers are deciding whether they're going to hike up rates or leave it as the same. All right, usually when they decide to up the rates a little bit, this has a positive influence on the, that specific pair. Um, basically, it's telling people that, okay, our economy is covering, um, everything's looking a lot better, so what we can do is hike up interest rates, um, therefore increasing the value of our dollar, right? This, this being the Canadian dollar. Um, so really, that trade was basically going off of that fundamental fact. Um, I did expect some hesitation at this point when I was looking to actually get into the trade. But ultimately, I expected price to start going down and see those weak rejections at this level for that continuation downwards. All right. Um, that being said, on the technical aspect, as you can see, this is what I was seeing here. Price had these highs at these points. All right. And as we come down, we can see price actually started to move lower, failing to 
um, get past those previous highs and we can see that continuation moving to the downside all right so if we look closer um, to the recent times which would be right around here price did come into this area and rejected um, forming the support at this point which is that significant low that I was speaking about all right and if we come to the one hour you can see again price was continuing with this bearish momentum all right forming these lower lows lower highs continuing downwards rejected from here so what i expected was for price to come within this area right here show some weak rejections just like as we see right here maybe we could see it clear in the 20 minutes all right so right here we'll get some rejections and these hesitation candles waiting for that outbreak i expected price to push back downwards and continue with that movement downwards but as you see we had some NCD strength um, coming in as NA traders step in throughout that intraday and price pushed back up and now it's hesitated around this area all right so this was one of the first losses for the week starting and as I said this is Sunday all of this ties in with market psychology so for an inexperienced trader, what you see happening a lot of times is if they take a significant set of losses, maybe if you're risking 1% on a trade, as you should, um, and you have, let's say, three trades in a row that ended up hitting your stop loss, so your negative 3%. What happens with a lot of, trader, with a lot of traders is that they take this on um, mentally and it becomes something agonizing to them right so it plays with their mentality in the terms that okay i've taken three consecutive trades back to back and now i'm down three percent how can i make this up how can i grow my account how I can i how can i cut back on these losses and immediately what a lot of people think is i'm going to enter the next trade a little bit more high risk and I'm going to look to make back that 3%. Maybe I could go break even for the weekend, then I could start a new. And this is where a lot of people go around in terms of their trading psychology, their mentality, when it comes to managing risk and, you know, over-risking your account, okay? Because you're already down negative 3%, what you should do is you should rethink your strategy, okay? So why didn't the first trade work out? When is the next time that you should enter a trade? What it is that you should be looking for, all right? One of the main reasons or one of the main ways to actually um, cut back on these possibilities where your stop loss is being hit and whatnot is look at the times when you're entering into the market. As I said, I did this on market open, not a lot of volatility, very low volume, and this was a possibility, a possible outcome of that. All right, there's a lot of mixed data um, as the markets open for a new week. All right, um, price pushes up in all haphazard areas and then it continues in the direction that it should have um, been continuing um, before. So that being said, really, a lot of traders, uh, a lot of professional traders, what they do, they stay out of the markets on market open. Maybe they wait a day or two, um, let some more volatility step in. Um, other traders as other traders come in there's more there's more movements in the currency pairs and then there's more opportunities to actually trade and make a profit okay so going back on to topic you lose three percent as in okay so at this point what happens is now you're looking for ways to turn this around and you're looking to enter the next trade that you take more high risk and when you start doing that and your psychology your mentality reaches to that point what happened is you put yourself up for failure and that's something you want to avoid when you're trading and you're risking your capital your money that's coming off from your pockets however you earned it whether it is you're working one or two jobs your 95 shifts and whatnot um to actually put into this account and that could be very detrimental to your view of trading because at that point when you start losing money you feel less confident in the next set of trades that you're going to take and therefore you're liable to make even more mistakes uh, you might start going to signal service providers and a lot of these signal service providers their risk to reward ratios are way off and sometimes they're rather they're rather vague 
and uh, what they're telling you to do, the signals of sign, there's TP ones, twos, and threes. Um, but if you actually put it up into your charts, it looks something like this. Their stop loss is all the way here, and this is their TP one. This is their TP two. TP three is one percent. All right, and honestly, this is not the best way to go around when you're looking to trade especially um, looking at signal service providers that do this and it's very easy to calculate you can take the values that they give you and you can actually put it right here on trading view use the same long and short positions um, tools here and you could input the values to see what the risk to reward ratios are and what exactly are they telling you to do um, but most of them are like that so when you do that you really set yourself up for failure that being said one of the ways to avoid this is taking a break from the markets, coming back with a clear mind and just approach it with a mentality that you are risking your money right now. All right. You're looking to make a benefit off of the risk, but you're not, you're not liable to see those benefits immediately. And that's a lot of things that that's a lot that goes over a lot of traders heads. All right. They think they need to make profits immediately on their trading account when in actuality it takes time to grow and compound the accounts to a substantial amount where you can be profitable every day and actually live off of um, the money that you're making trading unless you have that amount of initial capital required at the beginning like a hundred K or something like that um, but this is for like the average trader like myself who started with a hundred bucks to ten thousand um, so yeah when i started i experienced a lot of losses i didn't let that stop me because as you can see right now i'm also a profitable trader uh this by itself is apparent through the telegram group now let's move on all right so another trade i took with gbp nzd um this was a buy position i was really counting on that um gbp bullishness I, um, I was counting on that currency to be a little bit more bullish than how it turned out to be. Now, GBP NCD, as you can see, it has been playing out well at this point. All right. Now, at a point of entry, where we were at was somewhere around here. All right. So, as you can see, price was dancing within that area a lot. All right. Each of these candles represent an hour. So you can see how trying that was. This goes back to traders mentality. Now, because we're not seeing immediate profit, price is just dancing around and this takes an hour. Each candle represents an hour in the market. All right. So you can see over these multiple amount of hours, right? Um, 14, 15 hours, price was just dancing around right at that entry point, not seeing any real profit. And if you're a person, especially the new traders, you're eager to see profits. All right. We're eager to see that value in blue, that blue banner over our trading account, um, in MetaTrader and it makes us feel, um, I don't know, joyful. All right. So price was dancing around in that area, as you can see, going down a little bit. At that point, I was like, okay, exiting this trade at break even, not enough momentum. So even the trade was playing correctly. I was like, I'm not going to risk it for the biscuit at this point because what we were seeing was a lot of quick rejections right at that area, up, down, up, down. And usually this just signifies that there's not enough momentum for price to continue with the move. All right, Let me go back to the one hour. So you can see this is what was happening and, was, and I, being the person that I am, I'm all about risk management. So I was like, okay, I'm going to exit this trade at this point because I'm not seeing enough momentum. I'm not seeing enough pressure for price to push um, from that area to continue moving upwards. Now, because price was dancing around in that area, trading right between these two areas, there was a possibility higher that price could just break down and continue downwards. Again, this was also at the same point of time when we took that NCD card trade. So at that point, there was a little bit more bullishness on the NCD itself currency um, compared to the card. The card was the weaker pair at that point. 
the weaker currency at that point. So using my judgment, I exited this trade around break even, a little bit in profit. And as you can see at this point, price is playing out. Now, yes, all right, we could have stayed in this trade, but again, if you're trading professionally, you have to make these hard decisions, whether to stay in a trade or not, long term, hold it if you can, or exit out of it and you just look for better opportunities. Um, so this was one of those calls, and as you see, price is actually playing on. So the trade and bias was correct. However, couldn't wait for this to actually happen because we're also trading, while trading, we want to make, mitigate the amount of losses that we incur. Especially for the start of the week, this could be very detrimental to your um, trading um, psychology, right? Because then if you have a set rules or, or set strategy for yourself, when you lose trades consecutively, you start losing, you start losing when you use when you lose trades consecutively like this and you're using a specific strategy you start losing confidence within that strategy that you've built for yourself um again right um you should also note that not every strategy is perfect of course not everybody loses in the markets now and then our main goal is to maintain our profitability over the long term all right whether that's making five or ten percent for the month or if you're doing a little higher or even a little lower overall at the end of the month or however it is that you set your goals for yourself you're just looking for to be profitable overall and again this was one of those things as you can see again what we had was gbpchf all right so price was in a short in a sort of range um i can see this if you zoom back to on the four hour so as you can see there's no real direction at this point, right? Price is just dancing between these two areas, basically. All right, we could see the overall bullishness on GBPCHF, all right? But at this point, price is just bouncing between these two areas. Um, so that being said, yes, we were in a sort of range. I marked out this area right here, where price was sort of in an uptrend within the range itself as you can see we had higher high higher lows sorry and right, areas where price came into rejected from continuing moving upwards making these sort of peaks right here just line it up right here and rejected and at this point right here we had multiple rejections from that area it looked like price could have pushed back up All right so if you look at the chart here this is what we were seeing at this point and i said all right um so from a fundamental tr from a fundamental trade analysis um and technical the gbp bullishness expectation due to weaker usd over last week jobs report was lower than expected causing some weakness i'm approaching this week so, I misspelled we. I miss. I was approaching this week with that fundamental bias for GBP trades. This channel represents the level which we can expect a turnaround on the GBP for more of a bullish run market on uh, bullish run on market open into Tuesday. All right, and Tuesday is when we had all these news releases again, um, right here with the Euro USD stuff. Um, Joel's job reports and whatnot, um, job openings, sorry. All right, but as you can see, price came from that area. It started moving upwards a little bit. Then we had this strong rejection coming down at this point. I said, close the trade out or take your profits at least for your stops to break even. So this trade here wasn't a loss, all right? Um, it wasn't a loss. But we didn't get that continuation that we wanted to see on this particular pair, all right? So one of the reasons why I exited this trade is, well, it's pretty clear, actually. What we see at this point, all right, let's just put this for heaven's sake, put it for your reference view. What we can see at this point is that price gain, it rejected from that area. We have a strong bullish candle close right above here, right? That's a good indication for a possible continuation to the upside. But for whatever reason, at this point, 
price open and it came down here closing with this huge bearish wick all right at that point that indicates to me that for some reason there's a lot of pressure to the upside and price can continue that motion up so at this point it was better to be safe than sorry we took off some position sizes some lot size and we moved our stop up in order to mitigate our losses and control the trade um, if it continued moving upward that would have been great but if it came down and stopped us out we've come out a break even and still be overall good for the week thus far um, as you can see price came and started pushing lower at this point it came back right into that area came up didn't close fully on that bullish candle and then boom we had this bearish wick just passing that area showing more of a bearish pressure within this particular currency pair so again we mitigated our losses on that trade um so we had a little bit of profit on the NCD CAD and uh, well we mitigated the loss on GBPCHF and we were still in the GBP NCD at that point and as you can see another trade we entered um short on CHF JPY now again this was another another fundamental trade um really let's just pull it up real quick CHF JPY all right this was another fundamental trade um so at this point what we could have seen was okay price is in a strong uptrend as indicated right here on the four hour you can see clearly that price is in a strong uptrend making those highest highs higher lows and currently after this bullish push right here price was coming down into that area all right so at this point we're looking for that rejection from here for continuation upwards but if we zoom down to the one hour what we can see is a lot of weak rejections from the upside and price pushing downwards failing to make any higher any newer highs and coming down into that support zone so at this point right around here let's just pull it up right around that area what we could have seen was right here price pushing down from that area making some lower lows and some cues that okay at this point it looked like it was going to continue moving lower right around this area here and you can see multiple rejections price was coming in lower on that trade so at this point i was like okay so we could be seeing a possible break of that support level and for a continuation for price continue moving down moving this to the side here for a better view right and for that possible continuation downwards but as you can see at this point price actually started making some rejections back to the upside again we had a bullish close right above this candle wick right here and then price started continuing pushing up back into this area so this was a one percent loss on this particular um currency pair and that was our actual first loss first first um loss for the week thus far All right and again when it comes to psychology and you're not seeing any profit or any profits at this point after taking two well three or four trades you start to doubt yourself and this is something that's very common um no trader is safe from it a lot of people even professionals they get that feeling sometimes but again you have to start trusting your trading strategy a little bit more and have a little bit more confidence in yourself if you've been experiencing a lot of losses back to back um you should just take some time step away from the charts um, spend some time on yourself and hobbies or something that you like to do distract yourself for a while and then come back to the charts with a fresher mind and a more clearer perspective when you're looking to do more chart setups and um, mapping up trades that you're possibly looking to go and take all right 
um, this helps you prevent from seeing things that you want to see in the market such as if I saw this happen right here and I was looking like okay nah I still think it's gonna continue moving down when clearly on the 4 hour what we can see is that rejection from that area right we are still in a strong uptrend even though this was on a fundamental bias that the JPY um, reports was going to be good the gross, um, the gross domestic product report actually was negative one percent a little higher than what they determined before but we also had the current account to being a little worse than the consensus um so that was one of the fundamental moves for the jpy why it would have possibly been weaker than the chf at this point in time as you can see right now we do have a lot of bullishness on the swiss franc at this point um so again it would have been wrong of me to say okay if i saw this right here and i was like no price still most likely possibly going to start going down from that area that would have been wrong of me to assume because again what you can see on a technical bias is a rejection from an obvious super clear report um support all right so again we're just recapping the trades that are taken for this week thus far um we had a gj short as well which is still currently playing up is it i can't remember no it's not um this is a trade that i came out of as well again so as you can see here what we had let me just zoom this up what we had is a possible downtrend on this chart again this is an uptrend overall on a larger view but we were seeing some bearishness on this particular currency pair again low lows i mean low highs failure to break the previous highs and continuation price came into that support level rejected from this area right here a little bit and at that point, I was like, okay, I'm going to actually enter this trade for a possible short um, that price could pass this area right here and continue on its movement downwards. And as you can see, the trade that started playing out in our favor. But again, what we saw happening from that support level was another bullish rejection from it. So at this point, I was like, okay, we're going to call this trade and close your profits that you have thus far and just secure what you have and come out at break even all right so again this was the reason one to three risk three water ratio price currently showing slight bearish momentum here with the four hour kind of close failing to break the highs with some rejections on the one hour indicating the bearish pressure is there we'll also we'll close this trade if the current candle closes higher which it didn't at that point of time which was like right around here all right but as you can see price danced around that stop loss area and then came down rejected back up to that break even point at which point it didn't make sense staying in the trade because now we're not sure if there's enough bearish momentum for the trade to continue downwards or if this or if this move was actually by a stepping into the market for gj longs all right so we came out of it and we came out of gpchf as well um june 8 which is today actually All right so we entered another trade a short on uh for a two percent risk this particular pair was the cad chf all right so let's just move on to that chart cad chf as you can see playing out pretty well we actually extended tp down a little bit more to make it a one to four risk reward ratio as you can see right now some bullishness right here because we're coming to that market um session gap um to the asian session um so again this pair we were seeing a lot of bearish momentum kicking in um at the point of taking this trade it was kind of in a moment uh price was pushing down we had these levels here the support level price pushed down out of and then it came right back into it, testing as a resistance 
and showing some bearish momentum again we entered this because of right around here what we could see is that bearish candle close price coming back into that area along with the chf bullishness that we are seeing upon this um the current market um dynamics and the cad weakness so this was both a fundamental and technical bias trade as well and again by managing our risk that we had taken on trades previously before we were able to mitigate a lot of the losses well quote unquote losses and therefore we were able to take this trade almost with a clean a clear mind knowing that if this did come out and fail it would have been a two percent loss and that would just been two percent loss for the week thus far but as you see price is playing out currently at 2.6 percent which is roughly five about five percent um if they took the two percent risk on this particular currency pair again you can see price is playing up pretty nice i won't put it past that there could be a possible a possible retracement back into this level and then a rejection back down so this may be a level to actually look for longs again i mean for shorts to continue within this particular pair um, for the sales so right now we're in profit about four percent on this um so yeah low and stop the managed risk closing gj at break even um that's at that point and so far this was one of the winning trades that we have and again put another trade on a sell on the euro aud this is a trade right here euro aud guys all right so if you look closely what can we see price does show some upward momentum but why did we enter short reason being at this point on the forward chart we had this high being made all right from that area we could see the clear bearish momentum price pushing downwards from that level and if we go to the one over here what we can see is that this bearish momentum is the larger part of play within this particular currency pair and um, we came to a halt right at this area showing some bullish market direction right back into this resistance zone well supporting resistance because again we had this break here and we had previous um in the past where price came to that area and rejected upwards and then at this point here where price pushed all the way to that significant high and now it just pushed all the way back down breaking that support level all right so this shows that there's um a larger bearish momentum at play in this market currency pair um so there's really a lot of room for this particular currency to keep on moving back downwards into the new support zone that we have at this point so this trade was more so fundament more so technical than fundamental in terms of my bias um that being said we do have some the news on the euro which were relatively good but again that isn't something that we're seeing as a lot that has a lot of impact on this particular um currency all right we do have other news for the rest of the week we have cad rate statement and interest rate decision which would weigh heavily on the canadian dollar and also some more euro news and usd news for the remainder of the week that being said these are the only two trades that i'm looking to hold um uh, everything else in the market have been has been looking a little bit choppy again because um this is largely based on the fundamentals in terms of how each economy is doing dealing with the coronavirus and whether they are in a safe space to actually open back jobs um get the economy back on on route and uh, looking to taper in on high hike interest rates and all of that so things have been a little bit choppy overall um thus far for the starting of the month 
again we are in a new month so that may also be a reason as to why things aren't really moving as they should at this point um that being said again these are the only trades that i'm looking to hold um and continue moving forward with at this point of time with market psychology these are things that really help in terms of looking for the overall long-term progression of staying within forex seeing the wins all right but you can see wins without also you know you get in losses as well all right losing is a large part in forex trading is something that a lot of people overlook and are scared of um losing capital losing money um real money in the foreign exchange market to take that edge off a little bit there are things that you can do um focusing yourself your well-being mental health um having daily stuff that you would do to get your minds off the charts and also becoming funded as traders so becoming a funded trader does help in terms of where you're not risking your own capital but um you are given capital by a company to actually trade all right and this is very helpful for those that don't have a lot of capital to begin with but just enough money to start if you have 175 us um dollars there are companies such as ftmo the prop trading firm my fx seed and Phil crest also funded talent and five percenters those are trading companies that do allow um traders to trade their capital once you can prove that you are a profitable trader and they do have set specific rules i would show you some right now just give it a little a little effect magic boom there it is all right and yeah so you won't be risking your own capital but using the company's own and you're still able to profit off of all of this um so really trading is a route that a lot of people should could look at uh, to potentially gain some money some profit as a revenue um to quit that nine to five that is the dream job and to begin their life as entrepreneurs but again entrepreneurship isn't something that's easy to obtain it takes work and dedication same thing goes for training it is something that i personally find is relatively easy um, but it does take work like anything else in life and so is wanting to be wanting to live free all right wanting to be able to travel the world buy what you want without worrying about your account balance and all of that it takes work and dedication which a lot of people aren't too keen on but if you want to live that lifestyle of what you see um, out there on social media and whatnot this is one of the things that you could do in order to obtain that um this is not this is no cap i'm being really straightforward and really honest this is something that you could do in order to achieve that lifestyle but again it would take work whether you're signing up with a mentor you're doing it yourself it will be a lot faster with a mentor because then you're able to go over that learning curve that a lot of people experience in terms of losses losing hundreds and thousands of dollars within this trading econ this trading ecosystem um just because of arrogance and their impatience so i would suggest to get a training mentor that being said i hope this did cover some stuff on market psychology along with the trades that i am taking and how it played with my psychology in terms of you know this whole market situation that we have right now with not a lot of volatility or volume it's a little slow it's not like this every week um again this may just be because that we're starting a new a new month um this is the first week of well kind of like the first week of the month um so yeah that being said guys hopefully this was an educational video and you got some few stuff out of it and you should practice some of those things that i did mention in terms of getting away from the charts so you can see things a lot clearer later on that means said, guys, hope you have a good day. Like this video if you found it useful and subscribe. Get that YouTube algorithm to get this video out to other people that are interested within this field of forex trading and finance, investing, entrepreneurship.
Hope you guys have a good day and goodbye.